Hello and welcome to chapter 8, Monitor and Manage Linux Processes. Just a quick intro. That's quite enough. Yeah. So chapter 8, Monitor and Manage Linux Processes. Let's go. Mm. Nice coffee. So let's jump in to, to the console with no hesitation or delays. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. So the idea here then is to monitor and manage Linux processes. Am I typing this right? I think I am. Yeah. So I have a little drip in my nose. You know what I mean? Cool. So let's discuss a few tools here. Of course, I'm not going to go through the full gamut of tools, just a few, but these should be good enough for you to build your own toolkit, like I usually mention. So let's do something like, okay. Let's talk about the PS tool, the PS3 tool, the top tool, the LSCPU tool. Um, and I'm forgetting something here. Um, no, th these are good enough for us to start. Then I will discuss the kill tool and all the uh, plus and minuses and things around this, this tool. Okay, so let's start with the PS tool. PS means process process snapshot, and like the name implies, it's a process snapshot. Yeah, I told, I said the same thing twice, I know, but it's kind of the truth here. Uh, this is a process snapshot, which means that it's going to give you a process list, process list, it's nice, a process list, but in the format of the of a snapshot. Snapshot, snapshot meaning that it's going to be a, an instance in time, so it's not progressively it's not progressively changing how things change. So it just shows you how it is at that time and nothing else, which is, which is quite good because then you can, you can interact with that output with tools like PS, like PS, come on, like Grab, um, AWK and all of that stuff. So since it's a text output in st static to the screen, um, it will help you it will allow you to filter out further information, okay? But if you check the main page for the process snapshot, you will see that the process snapshot utility has lots to, to be used. And this is true about most tools that you have, or most, maybe all tools we have been discussing here. Always explore your main page to get more details further than the ones I'm giving you right here. So they are going to give you two recipes, the PS minus EF, so the PS minus EF allows you to see the, the process list that will contain the user accounts that spawned that, 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 um, that executable or whatever the case. The process ID, so I, I bet most of you guys know what a process ID is, but here it goes. So a process ID, it's the ID of the process. Again, I, I repeat myself twice, I know, but I will further explain. So the, the Linux kernel will give every process uh, an ID and that's how he, he can differentiate written one, ID, one process from the other, and also helps you to deal with some processes or with all, all processes. PPID means parent process ID, and by parent means this one spawned that one, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's, that's, how, it, that's how we can and should read uh, stuff like this. So just be careful because in, if, even though the PS utility is present in most, in most uh, Linux, in most Linuxes, which is true. Sometimes the columns are, can be a little bit um, ordered differently. So in this case, you see PIDs followed by PPID, but may, it may be inverted. So be careful because this may, inf may have some influence your for the decisions about uh, other tools. So just be careful, just do, do quick check. And this is per the per process ID, this is the parent process ID. So this is allow you to know who which one is which. Then some information, it's kind of the process timings, but the most important part is the last one. Let me just uh, give it a little bit, uh, stretch this a little bit and re re redo the command. So we can actually see the full extent of that information. So this means that systemd is our, it's kind of our main process in, 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 in a way, and it is. We will discuss uh, systemd on the next chapter, chapter nine. I highly advise you to like and subscribe to, to get more to get notified about the next video about systemd. But the systemd, it's the main process that manages uh, most processes on this Linux box and most Linux boxes. Then you have other processes and uh, we're, not going, we're not going to 
dive into much detail in all of these, but for example, square brackets means a kernel process. And since this machine is doing not much, um, most of these processes are user processes, normal processes. And let's just ignore the ones that look kind of crazy and kind of nuts. So let, just let them be and we should be all fine. I'll be back to the PS in a second. Let me show the PS3 here. Oh, sorry, the second recipe. It's the AUX, okay? So AUX uh, allows you to see uh, similar information, but in this, in this case, you'll have some more uh, visualization or visuals about uh, system resources, like memory, CPU, and that kind of stuff. So it, there is not one that is better than the other. You just need to choose which one you want to you prefer or you feel like it's the best one for the dirt use case and just uh, use it. Um, if you think this is not neither one or the other uh, is uh, the one you want, just uh, feel free to drop a comment down below and yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to, to help you out or explore the main page for your liking. So if I go to the PS3 now, PS3. So the PS3 is going to show us the process tree Okay, which is which, which makes total sense because it's it's on the name, so it means that this 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 is the parent and and it shows all the child processes, and the and oh, well it shows all the parents and all the child. So bless your heart. Like subscribe it to the help. So this is going to show us the all the parents and and all the child. Okay, and in like this you can um know which one depends on which. So again, this system is not doing much, so it does not show all us all that nothing that much fun. But there we go. You can see all the parents and all the childs in all the glory, and you know, and you can know how they re relate to to one another. Very nice, very cool, very very familiar. Okay, so you can also add the minus p here. The minus p will allow you to get the also get the information about the process ID on screen, so you know which you you know exactly. Uh, which one is a parent, which one is a child, and which ones um, well are related to another, and their process ID. Because you're going to, we're going to use their process ID soon enough, and uh, like this, it's in our actual face. So go back to bow to my list. Now we have the top, the top utility. That, okay, let me just uh, increase the windows, the window a little bit more without get, getting my head in the way. So this is going to show us the running processes. Uh, but in a more dynamic fashion, okay? So the top utility has many, many, let me just uncover the subscribe. <laughs> the top utility has many variations. Uh, we have top, X top, K top, Z top, top us. I mean, there are many, but this kind of, this is the vanilla one, the one that is kind of the uh, starting point for all the others. So you can see, you can see basically the same information that is a kind of a mix between uh, the PS AUX versus PS EF. Again, come here, explore. You can hit the H key to get more details, but here are a couple of tips. You can hit the number one key. If you see here, the number one key will expand your CPU because by default it's going to show you kind of a, a, sum a summary rundown of your CPU, CPU cores and all of that good stuff. If you hit the number one key, it's going to expand for all the cores or all the CPUs plus their cores. I mean, as you can see, this machine is doing not that 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 much. So then you have also the runtime, the load average, blah 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 blah, all that good stuff. So in just below, you will see the things that we saw with the PS AUX or EF, but more dynamic. So it's updating every three seconds, more or less. You can increase the update speed if you want. If you can decrease the update speed if you want. So it, it's all good and dandy. There we go. And this is dynamically updating, which is different from the PS. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a snapshot and it's more static, which allows us to filter out with other tools. You have here PR and, and, and I. This, this, means prior, this means priority and niceness. We will discuss priority and niceness on, on the further down the line chapter when I cover the RH134 course. Then you will discuss these two, so I can subscribe to get more information about those in the further in the further videos. Okay, let's go back to our first list, forward list, and we have the LSCPU. So the LSCPU utility allows us to list CPU properties. Okay, how, which CPU it is, how many cores, how many CPUs you have, the capabilities, the models, speeds, where it's running, blah 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 blah. 
So this is a good idea to have in handy because you can only you can only get you can only get some um, conclusions about the system process if you know the CPU. So if the CPU is uh, twenty years old, then you get you take your own conclusions. If the CPU is one month old, you have different conclusions. So by doing a less CPU, you can then get more background to decide if is the system is in, in good shape or in bad shape. The kill utility and all the sub sub and its brothers and sisters and cousins. You have the kick, the, the kill, the X kill, the P kill. You have multiple um, different kill-like utilities, but the, these are always around the same idea and just with different ways of applying of, of of results. But I'm going to show you the kill because it's kind of the one I use forever, and it's the father or mother call which one you prefer of all the others. So if you understand the kill, then all the others will just follow suit. Bless your heart. Cool. So now we have a lot, lots of information here that you can you can deal with. Okay. So let's uh, try to get ourselves a process that we can we can kill. Okay. So let's get some processes running that uh, I don't need, so I can kill. So once process that I use as a, a victim in these situations is the sleep process. The sleep will just put a, the machine at sleep at a specific time frame. So sleep 1000 seconds. Then I'm going to put the upper stamp. This is going to put this process in the background. And if I do EPS minus EF, the sleep is there. And if I can, I can even filter out with crap for the word sleep. And I can know that, so this is the, the, the one I just ran, this does not count. And this is a sleep process, it's just in the background doing nothing special. Even though the sleep utility looks a little bit useless, it's not. Sometimes when you run scripts, putting the machine to sleep for a few couple of seconds before something happens, or during something happening, it can be quite handy for, for, for the most part. Cool. Now, let's say I want to get rid of this process, the sleep process. Going back to what we know, this is a process ID of the process. This is a process ID of the parent. We don't know, we don't want, well, I don't want to get rid of the parent because I will just lose my terminal and all that stuff, most likely. So I just want to get rid of the sleep process itself. So I just run the kill utility and I just need to specify the process ID. And if I go back, it's gone. Okay, completely gone. So let's launch a new sleep process here. And let's get this process ID. There it is, 25. Two, five, four, six. So every time we start a process, even though it's the exactly same process as before, most likely it will get a fresh new process ID. Okay, so you need to also you need to check and recheck the process list to check the process ID, the process ID or process IDs or running processes to check its IDs because the IDs tends the kernel tends to refresh IDs tends to not repeat them. So go and go and check the IDs just to make sure you have the correct one. So in, in turn, to, I just kill this without any care in the world. Killed and the number, and it's gone. However, when you kill a process, you can kill a process in many different methods. So you can kill a process by using any of these signals here: one, two, and th one, two, sixty-four signal, different signals. I don't know all the signals by the top of my head because I don't have to. You can always check the main page for that. But I can tell you that I know the one, and I know the nine, and I know the sixteen. This is the one is a restart process. Nine needs kill without care. I mistyped it, but it doesn't matter. And 15, it's clean kill. Okay. So this means that if I issue the signal number one to a process, I expect it to restart. If I issue the, the number nine process, a signal, sorry, to a process, I expect it to get out and deal with the consequence la consequences later. And if I do a 15, it's a clean the process as cleanly as possible. Clean the process as cleanly as a, pos as a process can exit, okay? So we should try the 15 first to see if it, if, if it has good results, okay? Uh, if uh, the 15 is not enough, then you can just focus on, on um, any others that may be a little bit more efficient. So nine, it's, it's very aggressive, but sometimes it has to be done. This is a kind of a please get out. One is try to restart. This is the expected result. It doesn't mean that it's the, the accurate result. 
except for the number nine. The number nine signal, it's very aggressive and it's just get out and I don't care what happens to you. So if I go back to my uh, to my PS, following, searching for the sleep process, there it is. Now, if I want to kill it with the signal, well, if I go back to, 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 to the previous approach like this, this, this would kill it with the signal 15. Okay, that's in a rel box. So if you want to check the main page for your specific Linux, go and check what is the default signal. 15 is usually this is a default, but go and check if you want to make sure. Then I can issue just a, I can do like this, minus nine, and minus nine mean, means the number nine signal, which is the most aggressive, and it's gone. So in this case, the sleep process, it's not very aggressive, not, not, very, man, not very demanding, so it just kills fine with uh, any signal, but this goes to show that you can actually kill a process with uh, no prejudice. Another way to get a process ID of a process, it's kind of a command called pidof. And you specify the process name and it's going to give you the name. So let's compare. So 2554, 2554, so it actually matches. So you can, in this case, the sleep process has, has one process ID, it's quite safe, but same, some processes have multiple process IDs because of sub processes, be careful with that. Then I just can kill it. Or you can be really fancy. You can do kill the signal. You, um, you can open the dollar sign. You can then do the command. So pid of sleep. And hopefully sleep, it's gone. Because what this did was, oh, I put a zero instead of a nine. So, but it just killed anyways with the 15. But I want to type nine here. But the, the main part here is this one because this is going to expand the following command. So it's going to kill whatever this results. So this gives me that. Then it's going to kill. Then kill is going to kill that. Again, if you're doing this within this process, be careful because you may kill. You may kill processes that you don't want to kill at that time. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. This was chapter eight, monitoring Linux processes. Like and subscribe if it helps. Ask any questions or comments below. I'm happy to reply them. And I'll see you on the next video.